Hi everyone, Melissa Wilson here, physician assistant and AMIT Melanoma's Ask an Expert. Thanks again for coming back to join me for another lecture um, of Melanoma 101, um, where our goal truly is to educate our patients to understand all things melanoma. Um, today we're gonna talk about different biopsies and there are several different kinds and I get a lot of questions um, through the Ask an Expert line regarding the different types of biopsies and why physicians do different things. And so hopefully by the end of this little mini lecture, you'll understand the difference between the several types of biopsies that can happen. Um, and so first I wanted to just kind of explain, and here you'll see pictures of, this is, <laughs> it looks kind of like a buffalo, um, but it's supposed to represent a mole in the skin. And so you'll see that there are several types of biopsies that can be done. You can do an incisional biopsy, which what that would be, um, would be partially removing an area of a mole. So if you could imagine, sometimes a mole is extremely large and the provider doesn't feel as though they can remove the entirety of the lesion or there might be in this particular instance a part of a larger mole that has become atypical um, or worrisome and so what happens is in an incisional biopsy they'll remove that part of the atypical mole um, and only that part um, reasons to do this would be size of a lesion or um, if there is part of a larger process that doesn't look, you know, one process sub part of the process looks very benign and the other process looks very atypical. Um, that's not routinely done. Um, an excisional biopsy is where you actually attempt to remove the entire lesion, and there are several ways to do this, um, but what the goal of an excisional biopsy is, is to remove the entire mole. So what an excisional biopsy would look like is you know, they would really truly remove all of the pigment that is atypical. Um, what we want to try to stay away from is if this entire mole looked very atypical, we want to try to stay away from only biopsying one tiny piece. Like if we just took, you know, this little portion of the mole, we don't want to do that. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, the teaser is we'll talk about Breslow depth in another Melanoma 101 lecture. Um, but this really gives us a very incomplete picture of what this entire mole is doing, and that's extremely important for staging, which is, again, something we'll talk about in the Breslow depth lecture. So just to review quickly, you have an incisional biopsy that removes part of a mole. Um, you have an excisional biopsy, which removes the entire mole. Um, and then you have a partial biopsy, which you really try to not do, which is why I drew the Mr. Yuck <laughs> symbol over top of it um, because that really gives us very incomplete information about moles. So now we want to talk about what are the different methods that we can use to do these types of excisions. So um, the one that we like the most because it gives us a very great picture of what you get to see the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, which is the fatty layer underneath the um, dermis. You get a full thickness skin um, sample, and hopefully the entirety of the mole um, is something called a punch biopsy. And <laughs> because my drawing is extremely terrible, I actually have an example of a punch biopsy here. So a punch biopsy um, looks like a little cookie cutter, um, it's hollow on the inside and it has a blade that extends out here, but it also extends into um, into this little plastic part. Um, this is a huge one. This is one whole centimeter. You will never see a biopsy most of the time done with this. But if the mole is this big, then we would certainly use this. Um, when you pick a punch biopsy, you want to pick one that has a diameter that will um, obviously capture the entire mole and a little bit of normal skin around it, because that way you're making sure that you're really trying hard to get the entire mole removed. And so what you do is you put it on the skin like this and you twist it in a motion like this. And as you push, I'm not gonna do it cause it would cut my skin. But as you push down, um, see right here where there's a difference between the white and the blade that actually is designed that way to stop when it's received a full thickness biopsy. So after you, you keep going until it stops and then you pull it out and you have to kind of lift the, the sample up and cut it at the base, but that gives you a entire full thickness sample of the skin. And that's super important again for the teaser for the Breslow depth lecture that's coming up. Um, 
And so what this punch fire seed does is as it moves down into the skin, it's going to excise this entire mole and take it away, but also take a piece of the dermis and the epidermis so that you can really ensure that you get a full thickness piece. A shave biopsy is very similar um, and it's actually very commonly done, but it's using a scalpel and it's going to remove the skin hopefully in all one piece. Sometimes it gets removed um, incompletely. Um, this is what more folks understand as a traditional biopsy it's done with again a scalpel or a knife um, and it will remove um, this entire possibly some of the section but hopefully the entire section of skin um, depending on the provider and what available resources they have um, this shave biopsy may may also end up being a full thickness biopsy so there are many ways that you can biopsy the skin. Um, obviously, the goal is to remove the mole completely, um, but if that doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. There are other ways to get that, you know, hopefully if there is something like this where there's melanoma and there's a positive margin, they can go back and remove the rest of the mole in an excision. Um, but really the goal of biopsy is to try to remove the whole mole all at once. I hope that you learned lots about biopsies today. Please join us again for the next segment of Melanoma 101. I'll talk to you soon.